So is Hamid from Pakistan really a better developer than Alex from Germany? This Twitter thread caught my attention a few days ago, and there are a lot of opinions about it, a lot of heated debates. It has gone sort of viral. And in this video, I want to break this down and share with you my genuine thoughts about this entire debate. Let's put things into context and let me explain what this author is saying in his Twitter thread. First of all, he says that he supervised a project about two weeks ago where they got two programmers. The first one is called Alex from Germany. Alex doesn't use any AI assisted programming tools and Alex has about 19 years of experience. And then they got another programmer called Hamid from Pakistan. Hamid likes to use code, Copilot, GPT-4, all of the AI assisted programming tools. He also likes to use no coding, uh, tools and Hamid has only four years of experience. Now, this author goes on to describe, uh, you know, what happened and what was the outcome of this small experiment. And they say that the both programmers, they got the same Figma designs, they got the same specifications, same details, so on and so forth. And then Hamid finished the first iteration or the first version in one week with 100% test coverage, end-to-end -end testing of some elements of the, of the project, and that 95% of the work seems to work just fine. And then he goes on to say that Hamid built the UI using some tool. I don't know what this is. I've never used it. Uh, they generated some Cloudflare workers using GPT-4. So basically, they relied on the tooling to make stuff happen. And then Hamid's costs were about let's say 2,500 all-inclusive compensation plus, you know, the cost of the tools that he used. And the cost to run the project was about $139 per month. However, Alex finished only 7% of the tasks. Uh, the cost was around $3,500 all in all. And that the estimation to complete the whole thing was $45,000 from Alex plus around $11,000 just to add tests and that the cost of running the whole thing will be $20 per month later on. Then the author goes on to say that, um, you know, they were not really impressed by Alex's result. And then when they pressed him, Alex said that owner of the project will, will have a lot of control over what happens. Uh, he's justifying the cost that his experience, you know, uh, will make the whole project smoother to manage and deploy and control over the long run. And that's why it's costing uh, that much time and it's going to run much more efficiently with much less cost. And then the author goes on to say that there are plenty of developers right now like Alex, but that they made the decision to hire more developers like Hamid, who are obviously cheaper, uh, with less experience, but with AI-assisted programming, he thinks that they will be able to develop and you know, produce the same outcomes as Alex, who has a roughly 19 years of experience. And then the whole mess starts and everybody feels, some people feel threatened, some people feel attacked, some people were triggered by this, and everybody wants to share their opinion. Personally, I don't know where to begin. There are a lot of mistakes that were made in this analysis, and let's just break it down. Now, the first problem with this is I'm not really sure why there's this emphasis on Alex from Germany and Hamid from Pakistan. There are some underlying assumptions being made that developers from Western countries are naturally more advanced or maybe there's a higher quality of output in this. There's this ethnic geographical element that's coming into the debate. And I'm not really sure what's the value of this or bringing this into the conversation. Yes, it is true that there's this perception in the market that developers from Western countries, from the US or from, uh, you know, Europe are generally better than developers from, I don't know, the Middle East maybe or India or any anywhere else uh, in Asia. And in my opinion, that's completely bonkers. I've worked with people from different regions and just as much as you have developers who are incapable of producing quality work in Western countries, you will have developers also who are incapable of producing quality work in other countries and regions across the globe. I don't have necessarily statistics on the numbers because also how would you really evaluate uh, uh, code quality? Because it's all pretty much anecdotal in my opinion right now in the field. Uh, you, there's really no standardized metrics to evaluate the quality of a certain project. So let alone be able to evaluate the quality of outcomes based on geography. Everyone who starts thread, threads like this, they don't have necessarily evidence that they base their arguments on and they only use anecdotal evidence at best based on their own 
personal experience. Which brings us to the second problem, which is the sample based on which this argument is being made is tiny. It's a sample of one. Uh, meaning, if we took a cup of water from the ocean and looked at it, and in this cup we didn't see any fish, is it justified to make the conclusion that there is no fish in the ocean? I believe that's quite absurd, right? Um, no one in their right mind will make such a deduction from this small sample. There are so many variables at play over here, and it's really just, it doesn't make any sense to derive any conclusions from this uh, sample. The only thing we can say is that Hamid made the best of the opportunity and they delivered on their objectives, while Alex did not. But we cannot necessarily generalize anything from this that applies to a larger population. That's the second problem. Now, the third problem with this is, in my opinion, Hamid's performance and Alex's performance have nothing to do with the tooling. And it has everything to do with the mindset. And this is something that I talk about in a lot of my videos, which is developers need to develop or build business domain experience. They need to understand the needs of the business. They need to get out of their technical bubble and start understanding how businesses work, the cost of opportunity, what startups actually need versus what they want to build. When startups or companies in general hire you as a professional software engineer, they're not hiring you to provide the best technical outcome all the time. They are hiring you to provide the adequate technical outcome for the problem that they have at hand, the business problem more specifically. It's not about producing the best quality code all the time. It's about producing a sufficiently good enough code to allow this company to go to market as soon as possible, to put the, co the, the product out there and for the product to function without necessarily covering every single potential edge case or scenario that might pop up. Coding, as I always say, is a multivariate, multidimensional optimization problem. It's not a very linear problem where you have, you know, specific tasks that you go through in order to produce quality outcomes. A quality outcome could be for a startup, simply a working product. It doesn't necessarily need to be the most optimal code base. It doesn't necessarily need to be the best code you've ever written in your life. It doesn't need to have all of that code coverage. Sometimes the best outcome is for, a start for this code to just work. This will allow the startup founders alongside of you to evaluate whether the product makes sense in the market. And if it does, then we can start working on improving the code quality making sure it's better, paving the way for scale because we already approved the product market fit and now we are ready to bring in extra people on board so that they can contribute further. This is the difference in the mindset. Probably Alex has this mentality that he got burned out before from working in very bad code bases and now Alex thinks that every single project that he touches needs to have the highest quality of code because that guarantees always the best outcomes and that is not true number four the last thing i want to say about this is yes ai assisted programming is going to allow developers to increase the productivity but just as it's going to allow hamid to perform better it's also going to allow alex to perform even higher at a you know, much faster rate. And I know this by myself because I've been using these tools for over a year and a half now. Literally, every as soon as they came out, I was one of the early adopters as Copilot by the simple fact that I work at GitHub and we got early access to it and we've been using it for a really long time. And as a software engineer, I cannot work without it anymore. Not because, uh, you know, I, I la it, it just brings in stuff that I cannot think of myself or I cannot produce myself or I cannot look up myself, but it just takes away a lot of the boring work that we have to do sometimes as software engineers. And it allows me to focus on solving problems and making stuff happen with the highest possible speed. Now, when it comes to code quality, I believe that the outcome of my work has not necessarily changed. It could also probably be that it has improved. I don't have any evidence for this in terms of numbers because it's very difficult to quantify. But I know for a fact that whatever comes out from these AI-assisted tools, I put it to a lot more scrutiny than the code I would write myself. 
And sometimes, on many occasions, I have doubted the outcome or the output of these tools only to find out that they actually produce the correct answer and in my, my intuition was wrong. That doesn't necessarily make me more complacent or trust the tool more, but it also means that these tools are not ridiculously useless. They are actually very valuable and they are a major productivity booster. Awesome. With that said, I'm pretty sure you also have your own thoughts and opinions. Make sure you drop them in the comments and let's keep the conversation going. And remember, do not overgeneralize from small samples. Not everything can be an academic research project, that's for sure. However, make your own conclusions based on rigorous evidence and try it as much as possible to avoid confirmation bias, where, you know, you know the answer already that you want to promote and then you start looking for evidence to fit the scenario as opposed to deriving your conclusion from the evidence that you've already observed. Stay awesome. I'll catch you next time.